discuss about cash book. Cash is a current asset. We discussed it in our previous session. So, cash is a very risky and vulnerable asset because with cash you can easily do frauds or thefts. It can be easily misstated or misused or stolen. Therefore, recording cash transactions or recording the impact of cash is very crucial for a business. Cash receipts and payments are a daily basis transaction in any business. For one day, you receive many transactions involved with cash. So, for a business, you receive cash and you have to pay cash. You receive cash with separate or various sources and you have to pay it or invest it in different sources. So, here I have provided you some examples for these cash receipts and payments. Receipts is in this side. These are receipts. Introduction of capital cash sales, obtaining loans, income received, sales proceeds from selling assets. Yes, sales proceeds from selling assets. When we are enough of using an asset, that means we have to purchase a new one or the asset is obsolete. We can't use it anymore. Or we have to sell the existing asset and invest that money for another asset. Or based on different types of reasons, we are selling assets, non-current assets. So, that money we receive from selling the asset, we call sales proceeds from selling assets and receipts from debtors. Debtors are paying cash against their goods purchase. And payments. Here we have Cash purchases, payments to creditors, paying expenses, purchasing assets and cash drawings. Drawings means withdrawals by the owner. Therefore, cash book also has two sides, debit and credit. In the debit side, we record all cash receipts or cash inflows. In the debit side because cash is an asset when asset increase in the double entry system we already learnt we have to record it in the debit side of the particular asset account and when we are paying cash the amount of cash we have is reduced the asset is reduced when reducing an asset balance we have to record it in the credit side so, to record these transactions, we have to have an accepted format. Here you have the format of a basic or simple cash book. There you have date, receipt number. As we record receipts in our debit side, we have receipt number in the debit side of this cash book. When you are receiving an income, you are receiving a receipt along with that. When you are receiving a receipt, there is a number mentioned on the top of the receipt like this. Receipt number. This number you have to enter to this column. Date is the date you received cash. And the description is the opposite account of this transaction. If we have sales, the opposite account is sales account. Therefore, the description in there we must write sales account and value, the transaction value. 
the transaction value mentioned in this source document. We have to record it in this value column. And the credit side of the cash book, the date, if you are paying, if you are, if you are having an outflow, a disbursement of cash, the date which we issue the source document or the date the transaction actually happened. And voucher number, we discussed the source document for cash payment is payment voucher. Therefore, just like the receipt, there is a sequential number in the format. That number we have to record in the voucher number column. Description as usual, the opposite account and the value, the value mentioned in the particular source document. So, this is very easy to find details. For a certain period of time, we can find a summary of transactions, a summary of transaction details during a certain period. If we look at this cash books, we can get cash receipts from this side of the cash book, that means debit side, and we can get the information about payments from the credit side of the cash book. So, we'll explain this further using an example. In this transaction, following transactions are related to Jasmine's business for two weeks. Receipt number one, and you have given dates, receipt and voucher numbers, then the descriptions of transaction. The first transaction is our usual transaction, 1st of June, receipt number one. Introduction of capital, 100,000. So, as I told you, this is a familiar transaction to us. Introducing capital, 100,000. When introducing capital, what happens? The cash book balance increases. Therefore, we have to record it in the debit side. Date, 1st of June. Receipt number one. Description is we are introducing capital, therefore, the opposite entry goes to capital account. Capital account. Amount 100,000. Amount 100,000. And if we are recording capital account here, we should have a capital account. Now, I am opening up a capital account. I am using the T format here. So, capital account. Here, we recorded in the debit side. Therefore, in the capital account, we have to record it in the credit side because capital belongs to equity. When the value increases, it credits. 1st of June, visit number 1 and cash book. Hundred thousand. You have to follow the same format here. Next transaction, second of June, obtaining a bank loan hundred thousand. Receipt number forty one. So here receipt numbers may be different because we receive cash from different sources, different parties. Therefore, According to their sequential numbers only, we get. Therefore, when we are getting receipts from all over the places, there will be different receipt numbers. Never mind. So, here, receipt number 41, 2nd of June, obtaining a bank loan. When obtaining a bank loan, we receive cash. Therefore, credit side, 
second of june visit number 41 bank loan account bank loan account last time also i remembered you you have to record loan the word loan very clearly because we have two bank related accounts because one is bank account our asset account they are we keep savings in our bank and this is bank loan account which is a liability therefore there's a huge difference bank account is an asset bank loan is a liability if you uh, skip or jumble these things there will be a huge difference and a huge mistake therefore you have to mention clearly bank loan account 100000 100000 then bank loan account we have to open up another account we have already opened up the capital account now we are opening up bank loan account bank loan account second of june 41 cash book 100000 just like that i record it in the credit side because bank loan is a liability next transaction 3rd of june purchasing goods 60000 voucher number 1 purchasing goods is a expense therefore 60000 voucher number 1 and we have to record it in the credit side the transaction is Third of June. It take place in third of June. Therefore, you have to put the date. Third of June. Voucher number one. Purchase account. Amount sixty thousand. We don't have a purchase account. Therefore, we have to open up a purchase account. Here we are going to open a new account, purchase account. Third of June. This is num. Sorry, voucher number one. Cash book. Amount sixty thousand. Purchase is an expense because we pay, uh, receive goods to resell in purpose. Therefore, we consider it as an expense. When expense increase, the balance goes to debit side. Now you can see the double entry is completed. Next transaction, fourth of June, cash sales hundred and twenty thousand. This is number sixty-two. Cash sales. Cash sales is a method of receiving an income. Therefore, fourth of June. Receipt number sixty-two. Cash sales. You can just write uh, cash sales, or here I am writing sales account. Sales account amount hundred and twenty thousand. Now we don't have a sales account, therefore we have to open up a sales account. I'm opening up a sales account. Fourth of June, sixty-two. Cash book, hundred and twenty 
hundred and twenty thousand. Okay. Next transaction. Sixth of June, purchasing of his equipment, twenty thousand. Voucher number two. Purchasing of his equipment. It's a purchase of an asset of a twenty thousand cost. Therefore, the date is sixth of June. Sixth of June. It is our second transaction. Purchasing office equipment. Here it is better if you write only the account. So I am writing only the account office equipment. Office equipment account. The amount is twenty thousand. Now we have to record it in a separate account. So I am going to open up a new account, office equipment account. Office. Equipment account date sixth voucher number two cash book twenty thousand debit side because it is an asset when the asset balance increases you record it in the debit side next transaction seventh of June. Wages paid five thousand. Question number three. So wages paid seventh of June. They have paid wages, which is an expense. Seventh of June. Question number three. Wages account. Amount five thousand. It's a payment. That is why we recorded it in the credit side. So we need a wages account. Therefore, we are going to open a wages account here. Wages account. Seventh of June. Voucher number three. Cash book five thousand. It is very easy if you practice this system. It is nothing to worry if you know the double entry principle. It is very easy. Next transaction, eighth of June, rent income twenty four thousand. Voucher num sorry receipt number ten. Eighth of June. Receipt number ten, rent income twenty four. So eighth of June, receipt number ten, rent income account amount twenty four thousand. Here, this is also very important thing. Rent income. You have to mention this income part very clearly because there are two things: rent income, rent expense. Sometimes we are allowing a tenant to use our business property and we obtain a rent income. Or other way around, we are living as a tenant in some kind of a business or some property and we are paying a rent expense. Here. It is rent income, so we have to record it very clearly because otherwise there will be a huge difference. Because rent income is an income, expense is an expense. Therefore, recording method will be different. So rent income twenty four thousand. You have to record it very clearly. 
Now we have to open up another account for rent income. Rent income. Eighth of June. Voucher number. Sorry, receipt number ten. Cash book. Twenty four thousand. Next transaction. Cash drawings. Two thousand. Ninth of June. Voucher number four. Cash drawings. Two thousand. Cash drawings. We discuss the withdrawals of owner before the profit is given to him. Therefore, ninth of June, he has taken some amount of money, which is a reduction of money. Ninth of June, voucher number four, drawings account, two thousand. We maintain a separate account for drawings because it is very clear to rectify or identify the errors and things happen when the drawings are recorded separately. So we are opening up a drawings account here. Drawings account. Drawings account has a debit balance because it is a reduction in equity. When the equity is reduced, the balance or the entry will be debit. Therefore, drawings account will be debited by two thousand on ninth of June. This is sorry voucher number four. Cash book two thousand and other transactions. 10th of June, cash sales hundred thousand. Receipt number thirty eight. 10th of June, and it's a cash sale. Therefore, it is an income. To record it, receipt number thirty eight. 10th of June, sales account. Hundred thousand. We have already opened up a sales account. Therefore, we have to record this transaction with the different date. Tenth of June. Thirty-eight. Cash book. Hundred thousand. Two dates. Two entries. Two days, two entries. Last transaction. Fifteenth of June, voucher number five, cash purchases fifty thousand. Fifteenth voucher number five, purchase account fifty thousand. So that also we have already opened up a purchase account. Therefore, you have to record it there. Fifteenth voucher number five cash fifty thousand like that. So finally, we have to close this account. We can't just keep it like this. Here we assume the accounting period ends with this two weeks. We are making cash book balance for this two weeks. Therefore, we are closing this account. How to close? I taught you in the previous lesson. We have to check the highest value of these debit and credit columns. At the first side, you can see. There are three hundred thousands in this side, but in the credit side, only thousands of sixty thousand and fifty thousand. Therefore, you can conclude this debit side has the highest value. So, we'll calculate 
the highest value and we have to record it in the both sides. Here we have 300 thousands that means 300 thousand, 120 thousand, 420 thousand and another 24 thousand, 420 thousand plus 24 thousand. 444,000. If it is difficult for you, just write in a scrapbook and take the total. Here, 100,000, 200,000, 320,000, 344,000 and 444,000 is the total. 444,000 for both sides. And here, in the credit side, that is not the amount. There is a gap, which is the cash balance. There, you have different digits. Therefore, you have to write it clearly somewhere and take the addition. Otherwise, you will mistake the digit positions and your calculations will be mistaken. So, you have to record it. That means, write it in a scrapbook or somewhere and take the calculation, the sum of those values very correctly. So, we have 60,000, 20,000, 5,000, 2,000 and 50,000. You have to record it like this with separate digits and you have to take the addition. Let's see. Thousands we can directly put. There is nothing. Here 7, 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 5, 13. We get the total of 137,000. Now we have to check the difference between this debit side and the total of the credit side. How can we do that? 444,000 is the total. We have to reduce 137,000 like this. And take the answer. If we take the answer here, here you get 7, here you get 0 and you get 207 as the answer. Therefore, 207 is our balance carried down here. That is why we search for this difference. The difference means the remaining cash amount. Therefore, 207, the answer we obtained is the balance carried down. If you are carrying down from here, you have to bring it forward. Bring it for the next year. So, that 207,000 we record here as balance brought forward. Make sure you write here brought, not bought. Balances can't bought. So, balance brought forward. We bring the remaining cash amount. We had receipts of 444,000 and we spent 137,000. Remaining is 207,000 which is the balance carried down. That means at the end of the period we had this amount and we are bringing it forward for the next accounting period. 207,000. At the beginning of the next accounting period, we have 207,000 of cash 
in our hand and we have to close the other accounts also that you can do i will start from here and i'll show you one account then you have to do the rest of the accounts by yourself so here the highest side is this 100000 for both sides here balance is zero therefore balance brought down or carried down is 100000 it is the same and balance brought forward is 100000 it's also same because in the last session we discussed cash 100000 in the bank loan we haven't paid yet therefore the liability remains as 100000 for the next accounting period also therefore you have to close these accounts by yourself try it and do it and you have to be careful about these values because in these accounts you have to take the total like this in sales account we have two entries but it is very similar to this account a uh, total 120000 and 100000 220000 put it to here both sides and here the balance is zero therefore balance carried down or brought down is 220 it's the same and balance brought forward is also same 220000 so try it you have to do the rest of the accounts you have to close these accounts and that is when the double entries are completed with this sum we are moving on to another example which you have to select what to record and what not to record in the cash book so please focus on your screen and read this example very carefully and you just write it down what you should record in the cash book and what are the transactions or entries you have to avoid from recording in the cash book so we'll move on to the next example on your screen example 2 given below are transactions related to jack's business for the month of may you have given dates source document numbers transactions and amounts the first transaction cash balance first of may cash balance 300000 there you have haven't given any source document number or any transaction nature description because this cash balance means when we are recording transactions we record transactions for a certain time period let's say for 1st of january from this 1st of january we prepare statements or accounts until 31st of january one month if you have a balance of investing capital or whatever 10000 some transactions taken place during this month therefore this opening balance is changed this balance changed to 20000 by the 31st of january this balance will be 20000 after this month this balance will be transferred to the next month that means 1st of february we are taking the balance at the end of this month to the beginning of the next month the balance in your exercise is also such a balance that means a balance brought forward 
from the previous month to this month. Therefore, that balance you have to record as it is on 1st of May. No source document. Cash balance. Amount. 300,000. Like that. You have to record as it is mentioning cash balance as the description because it is the broad forward value of the previous month. Let's move on to the other transactions. 5th of May, purchasing goods 100,000, voucher number 30. 5th of May, they purchase goods. 5th. Voucher number 30, purchase goods means purchase account. Amount 100,000. Like that. Therefore, now you can see we have to open up a purchase account to record the opposite entry. Therefore, I'm opening up a purchase account. Purchase account date 5th of May voucher number 30 cash book 100,000. Next entry cash sales 150,000 on 6th of May receipt number 70. Receipt number 70, 6th of May, cash sales, that means sales account, 150,000. To record sales, we have to open up a sales account. Sales account, 150,000 amount, 6th of May, 70, cash, 150,000. Next transaction, credit sales, 200,000, 7th of May, invoice number, 11. So, credit sales. There is no cash basis. Therefore, you don't have to record it in the cash book. But anyway, you have to post a double entry for this particular transaction. Therefore, as it is a credit sale, as a result of credit sales, we get debtors. The date is 7th. Amount is 200,000. We have to open up a separate account for debtors. Then record this transaction. Date 7th. Debtor is debit 7th of May. Invoice number 11, sales, sales account, amount 200,000. This is one entry. The other entry should be posted to the sales account, 7th of May. Invoice number 11, debtor, $200,000. There is a separate prime entry book to record these credit 
transactions but still we haven't learned it therefore i'm entering it in it directly to my ledger accounts in next sessions we'll learn how to record this uh credit based transactions in their journal books or day books and post to ledger account so now for now i'm recording it directly to my ledger account the double entry as credit sales account debit debtors account next transaction 10th of may credit purchases 60000 invoice 23 it is also very similar but opposite of this transaction purchases but on credit basis as it is on credit basis we don't need to put or record it in the cash book we have to record it as a credit purchase as a result of credit purchases we create or the creditors are created so to record this transaction we need another account a new account creditors so i'm going to open up a new account creditors account and record the transaction the transaction is amount 60000 debt Tenth invoice twenty three. Tenth of May invoice twenty three. Creditors sixty thousand. The other entry goes to creditors account. Tenth of May. invoice 23 purchase account 60000 this is how we record the credit purchase of goods next again we have credit sales 90000 invoice 15 date 12 it is also very similar well invoice number 15 debtor 90000 and the opposite entry goes to debtor's account 12th of may invoice number 15 sales 90000 next transaction cash sales 15th of may 100000 receipt number 33 so the date is 15th may receipt number 33 sales account the amount is 100000 amount is 100000 that should be recorded immediately in the sales account 15th may 33 cash book 100000 next cash purchases 80000 20th of may voucher number 31 cash purchases therefore cash is going outside the business just like the previous transaction the date is 20th voucher number 31 purchases 80000 
the amount is eighty thousand. Amount is eighty thousand. Immediately recording in the purchase account as it is a cash purchase. Twentieth, thirty first of receipt. Uh, sorry, voucher number thirty first. Then purchase account. The opposite is cash book. Amount is eighty thousand. Next, twenty fifth bank loan obtained fifty thousand. Receipt number fifty three. Twenty fifth of May. Receipt number fifty three. Bank loan the amount is fifty thousand. So we have to open up a new account for bank loan. Bank loan account. Date twenty fifth of May. Receipt number fifty three. Cash book fifty thousand. Next, twenty sixth of May, there are uh, two transactions. Cash received from debtors, fifty thousand. They have given the common number. Debtors cash received from debtors. Therefore, on twenty sixth of May, we receive cash from debtors, fifty thousand. Twenty sixth of May, debtors. As the debtors are paying the money, their account balance will be decreased. Therefore, the debit entry is going to the cash book as debtors account. The debtor debtors account will be credited. As a result, twenty sixth May cash book fifty thousand. Out of this amount, they have paid fifty thousand to the business. Therefore, from their balance, this fifty thousand will be reduced, and as a result, the business will get fifty thousand of cash. And cash payment to creditors sixty thousand. On the same day, we are paying to creditors twenty sixth of May. Creditors account. The amount sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. We are paying to the creditors. As we are paying to the creditors, the liability value, that means the liable value, the value we owe to pay them, will be reduced. Therefore, creditors account. Will be debited here. Twenty sixth of May, creditors sixty thousand. We can debit it in the creditors account like this. Therefore, you can see right now they have. That means the business have paid the total debt they had towards creditors because they have made sixty thousand purchases and. On twenty six, they have paid the total debt of sixty thousand. So, the last transaction, twenty seventh of May, deposited in the bank ten thousand. On twenty seventh, they are depositing in the bank ten thousand. So, twenty seventh. Thirty-two bank account ten 
ten thousand. I told you in the previous example also when you are writing the bank loan account and the bank account, you have to mention the word loan clearly. Just now you can see the difference. The bank ac loan account is received, therefore it is on the debit side. And to open up a bank account, we are giving our money away. That means it is credited. Therefore, you have to mention this loan and account very clearly. So, on 27th of May, we are depositing 10,000 in bank account. Although our money balance reduced, we are getting a new asset, bank balance. Therefore, we have to open up a new account for bank. Bank account on 27th cash here number 32 10,000 bank account debited cash book credited now this is not an expense you have to make it sure this is not an expense because we have deposited it in a separate place. Therefore, the amount decreased from cash book has been appeared in a separate place, same as an asset bank account. Now, that is all the uh, transactions you have given. So, again, you have to make sure whether we recorded all the transactions so focus on your screen and make sure you recorded all the transactions the required ask the cash book and other ledger accounts therefore we have made the cash book and other ledger accounts as we discussed you have to record or close this account just like we practiced you have to close this cash book and all the other accounts by yourself so, at the end of this session, you will practice how to record transactions in cash book as well as how to get the closing balance. So, in the previous example, I taught you how to close the cash book. Now, in this exercise, you have to close these accounts by yourself. So, make sure every account has closed and you take the balance brought forward value. With this exercise, we are moving on to the next subunit of our lesson, Discount.